Plotting the graph in AS Physics Paper 3 is one of the biggest challenges faced by most of the AS Physics students, especially when you need to conduct the experiment, you need to do some calculations, as well as to plot the graph within that one hour. In this video, I'm going to give you four important tips in dealing with your AS Physics Paper 3 graph part. And I need you to stay until the end of the video because not only tips that I'll be giving you, but also applying the tips in some of the positive questions and also super duper important tips that I'll be giving you at the end of the video. So stay until the end of the video. So, and please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more important tips to be shared and you don't want to miss it. So let us get started. Tip number one, axis. Everybody knows that when you want to plot the graph, you need to have your y-axis and your x-axis. So what is important about the axis? So you have for the axis, it's very simple. You just need to know you have y-axis and x-axis, but you have to use sensible skills on your axis. That is a little bit of challenge here. And the skills that you choose must be plotted, yeah, must make sure that your plotted points occupy at least half of the graph grid in both x and y axis. Hmm, what do I mean by that? No worries, I'm going to give you examples of that later on related to graph. And after that, make sure that you label the quantity and the units which are appropriate. And also make sure that not more than three large squares between skill markings. So you have to label your skill and make sure that the gap between each skill is not more than three large squares. So this is a graph that is given here in your paper. So do you know that there are 12 large squares on your y-axis and there are eight large squares on your x-axis? Now, what do I mean by you need to occupy, you need to make sure that your plotted points occupy at least half of the squares. So for y-axis, you need to make sure that your points scatter at least six large squares. I am talking about the scattering of the points, not the line. And whereas for the x-axis, you need to make sure that your points scattered at least four large squares. Now, let's say you have an example here. Plot a graph of t squared on your y-axis against L on x-axis. Start your x-axis at L equal to zero. You see, they give you a little bit of tip here. Draw the straight line of best fit. So this is a graph paper again. So I know, I know. So you will be wondering, oh, am I supposed to draw a graph? So this is a stress that you'll be facing. Because how to determine the skills is one of the most headache part in plotting the graph, right? Ugh, I feel stressed as well. Don't worry. Hey, which skills should I use? This is what inside your mind when you are supposed to plot the graph. Don't worry. I'm giving you extra, extra tips for that. So stay tuned. Tips in choosing the right skills. What do I mean by right skill and wrong skill? Is there a right skill? Is there a left skill? No, choosing the accurate skill is what I meant. So first of all, you have to look at the smallest value and the largest value on your x-axis and your y-axis. That is the first thing that you need to do. Now, second part, okay, second point, use simple whole number as the skill because it saves you a lot of your time. So, and do also remember, do not use odd skills because 
just imagine if you're using odd skills, is it very easy for you to determine, okay, one reading that you are supposed to plot? It is not easy. Odd skill that I meant was like the multiple of 11, the multiple of 7. These are very odd skill. And it is a very, very hard for us to determine the exact reading for to plot our reading. Now, let's say a table is being given. So you are supposed to plot a graph of L. This is your y-axis and this is your x-axis against t squared, right? L shouldn't be a problem because all the numbers are very nice numbers. So it's very easy for you to determine the scale. And remember, the question mentioned that you have to start your L scale with zero. Start L with zero. So shouldn't be any problem. Now, the most problematic part is your X axis. Look at all my X axis. Look at all my values. But no worries. First, determine the smallest value. This is my smallest value. And round down to the closest whole number. Uh, so because it is easier for you to plot your skill. So I'm gonna round it down to maybe one. So I might want to start my X axis with one or zero. So it depends. And look at the largest value, which is 4.04. .04. But I'm not gonna round it down because this is your X axis, the largest value. You're supposed to round it up. You can round it to the larger number as compared to four, you cannot just round it to four because your X axis is 4.04, .04, which is larger than four. So you might want to round it off to 4.5, maybe make your life easier or maybe five, not a problem. So since I have an idea on what are the values that the skills that I'm supposed to use on my graph, now just transfer all these numbers to your graph. So this is my L labeled your axis, y and your x axis correctly together with their appropriate units. And L question did mention that you have to start your L with zero. So not a problem, just put zero there. And this is my scale. I start with zero, then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I have already used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm safe for my y axis because I have used more than six large square. Remember? What about your x axis? Oh, my x axis. So I would start with zero as well. And uh, my skills are one, two, three, four, five. So let me see how many big squares that I'm using here. One, two, three, four, four, more than four. Because my last reading is 4.04, .04, remember? So I use more than four large squares here. So I'm safe. Now, next one, tip number two, plotting. So all the readings that you have tabulated in your table must be plotted correctly on your graph because the examiner is definitely going to check whether this is a correct point or this is the point that you alter. So you have to make sure that all the points are plotted correctly and accurately on your graph. This is the plotting of my graph. So all the points has been plotted here accordance to this table. So this is, again, my x-axis, uh, this is my y-axis, and this is my x-axis. So all the points are plotted quite nice here. Then tip number three, your best fit, BF. So what is best fit? Best fit is the straight line that passes through most of the points plotted on your graph. But you know, sometimes because we are human, when we conduct the experiment, there's some errors that are occurring. Not all the points are scattered on that best fit. So not, it is not easy to plot a best fit. It depends on your experiment as well. So if you have a problem in determining your best fit, then I would suggest you to go for the calculation of centroid because this is 100% accurate centroid is the point where most of the straight uh where the straight line graph must pass through i mean your best fit line must pass through so how to determine your centroid so look at the table again 
First of all, identify which is your y-axis. Oh, this is my y-axis. And which is your x-axis? This is my x-axis. Centroid is just an average point that is on the graph due to your readings. So all you need to do is just to find the average of your y-axis and your x-axis and get a coordinate. That coordinate is called centroid. So I will just add up this y-axis first, 20 plus 40 plus 50 plus 60 plus 70 plus 90 and divided by the number of readings I've taken. I have taken 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just divide by 6 and you get 55 on your y-axis. What about the x-axis? You just take 1.12 plus 1.82 plus 2.13, 2.5, 3.1, 4.04, and divide it by 6, and you will get 2.45. Round it off to three significant figures, just like your x-axis. So I got a point here. My centroid is 2.45 and 55. You can plot this centroid on your graph, but never plot your centroid as X because this symbol represents your readings, not the centroid. So if you want to plot the centroid on the graph, just do it like me. Just put a dot here because you see the dot that I highlighted is actually represented my centroid. Then use your ruler, take out the ruler and just adjust here and then make sure that the best fit line must pass through centroid. And at the same time, make sure that all the readings are very close to your best fit line. So this is my best fit line. Quite close, huh? So that's it. And tip number four, the quality of the graph. Now in AS, quality is very, very important. So what is quality? So you need to make sure, if this is about quality, just make sure the size of your X is within one small box. Now go back to the graph again. You see that this is my graph. We have large squares and small squares inside the large square. So make sure that the size of your X is within one small little square. Cannot be too big because that is out of the quality and cannot be too small as well. Just make sure the size is within that one small square and you are safe. So, and, and make sure that all your points are not too far deviated from the best fit line. Now, what do I mean by not too far deviated from the best fit line? So back to my graph again, you look at all my readings, all my points are very close to the straight line. So what do I mean by not too far deviated? It is you check, from one of the points, let's say, okay, I have the other point here. So you check, okay. You need to make sure the horizontal distance from the point, from your reading to the straight line cannot be more than two and a half small squares. That is what I meant by quality. If it is more than two and a half of the small square, that means your graph is of low quality. So you need to make sure that your points are within that 2.5 small squares, right? So I'm giving you one extra example. This is a graph. Let's say one of the readings is actually too far from the best fit line. So how far is far? You look at the horizontal distance. This is one square, two square, three square, and four squares, four small little squares deviated from the best fit line. So what should you do about it? Because the examiner is going to penalize one mark for the quality of your graph. So what are you supposed to do? First, make sure that you still have time to reconduct the experiment for this particular reading. So if you get a better reading, if you get a better reading, make sure that you just erase this point, just erase the point here, because you, you plot the graph using the pencil. So you just erase the point and then just plot the point that you get, which is closer to the straight line. And what about your table? So your table, if this is one of the points, the point, the initial point that is far deviated from a straight line. So you just use your pen, put a cross here. That's it. 
And then just write down below the table, just add extra column for the table, and then just add with the readings, the better reading that you got. But, but, but there's also another situation when you reconduct the experiment for this particular reading, you get almost similar result or you get the exact result. So all you need to do is just to put the circle, but you have to make sure that you reconduct the experiment because you need to show on your table that you reconducted the experiment and you didn't improve. Yeah, the result is still the same. So draw a circle here. Draw a circle meaning to say that you would treat this point as one of the anomalous results. So for your gradient, for your uh, constant calculation, you would just ignore this point. Oh, super tips here. Yes, what happens if one of the readings is far deviated from the best fit? That is what I explained just now. So please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube video and I wish you all the best in doing your paper three graph part. And yes, subscribe to my YouTube video for more tips, more examples, more super tip to be shared on my YouTube channel. And you don't want to miss it. So you can also have a look at all the videos that I shared on my YouTube channel to help you to boost your AS physics as well as your A-level physics. I wish you all the best and stay tuned. See you in the next video. Bye.